Furious Driving, proud to be supported by Diamond Bright, protecting, cleaning and caring for the Furious fleet and for yours with 10% off using code FD10. Follow the links in the description below. Hello and welcome to Furious Driving. And this is a 2023 Kia Stonic GT Line S 1 litre GTDI 48 volt. They don't put that much on the boot though, but let's take a look around and see what this thing is like. It's an interesting driving position because although this is a fairly tall crossover shaped vehicle, you do still sit very low in the car like you're in a regular hatchback or saloon. It does mean of course that the shoulder line of the windows is quite high, but it gives it quite a sporting feeling as it goes. In typical Kia style, the controls are all very light. Feel very positive, there's a lovely light and notchy gearbox where you can just clink it from one gear to the next very happily. It's a lovely manual six speed in here. Pedals, very light underfoot. And the steering's also quite light as well. Very sharp and accurate feel to it. And the car feels quite compact on the road. It doesn't feel like you're taking up a lot of space that's a, a concern as to where you're gonna stick it on the, on the tarmac. So, in terms of styling, it is more of a crossover than anything else at all. It's quite a high bodied car, but the proportions seem to work reasonably well on this one. And the press office did really well specking it in this bright yellow color, which really does suit the shape very well indeed. And it's not just me likes it, every fly, wasp and bee in the forest has come to say hello as well. The front of the car is very much Kia's family face now, with this large white, actually fake black grille, gloss black with the chrome highlights slightly protruding big clear headlights and this large finned area down here, little canards adding a lot of visual interest. And at the bottom we've got our actual big air intakes, a little bit more satin metal stuff, fog lights down here, and of course the big satin area at the bottom. The thing about crossovers and SUVs is the front of the car is just so big and tall. Designers need to be very creative not to go over the top with too much detail. These three inlets here just give it just enough. Otherwise it would be, I don't know, too, too busy, but this is just enough restraint. Along the side of the car, we've gone for a two-tone effect. The pearl yellow is the body of the color. And then we've got the floating metallic black roof. This is actually a lovely little sparkle in this paint as well, which gives it more of a coupe look. It's slightly ironic that manufacturers are not building coupes, but they want to make the cars look like coupes, even though they're not coupes anymore. Down the side of the car, there's lots of details down these tall doors. A swage line dipping in, dipping out again. Plastic trim at the bottom to fend off scuffs and damage, but also make it look a bit chunky and off-roady, which continues around the wheel arches. The rear three quarter of the car has privacy glass all round, so nice and dark, keeps the sun out, keeps your belongings away from prying eyes. Back window, not too big, but uh, doesn't give a bad view out of here. And it's very clean design on the back of the car, not much interrupting the shapes the designers have given us, just a little bit of satin trim detail at the bottom. And the button to get in there is tucked underneath, so it doesn't spoil the line. We also have got a reversing camera tucked in there. Boot space is not too bad. Bear in mind, it's not a huge car on the outside, much my big camera bag, tripod stuff. We've got a cubby here on the left-hand side for bits and pieces, and we've even got a storage area under here, well, alongside the battery, I suppose. Pull the boot down. And we have got some big sturdy roof rails on top, ready for adventure. Now jumping inside the Stonic, you'll notice we've got a lock and unlock button here on the door handle for keyless entry if you want. The door being a crossover is very tall indeed. Lots of plastic up top, which doesn't feel too bad. It's not heavily premium, but it's not rattly or scratchy too badly either. We've got a little satiny area down here, which has got our four electric windows, window lockout for the back electric mirrors and electric mirror fold which is nice, and you notice the mirrors have got a uh, blind spot awareness zone in them as well. We've got a tweeter up top, big speaker down the bottom, a cup holder, a bottle holder in there, and a slightly smaller area for gubbins at the back of it. Looking at the seats themselves, we've got some nice little bits of trim detail. We're alive in the interior up. It is quite heavy and black in here. Not much in the way of color scheme going on, but the silver accents and the white accents do do a bit to lighten things up. You'll notice the stitch detail in the fabric is an echo of the front of the car, the grille pattern and the uh, satin lower spoiler on the boot of the car all match this. Got some white accents in the top and you've got white piping and stitching, which just breaks the uh, line of the seat up, makes it look a little bit more interesting. It's an easy chair to find a comfortable position in. And looking forward, we've got a massive tea shelf area. All of your pastry and coffee and tea needs can be catered for in this big area. You can barely even touch the windscreen. 
um, from the driver's seat. Well, not that you'd really want to, but it just shows it's a long way away. Moving down, we have got a carbon fiber effect dashboard with a few interesting shapes in it to make it look, well, interesting and appealing. And then we've got gloss piano black, which I'm never a fan of, I have to say. It does look good initially, but it gets so dusty and fingerprinty so quickly, I never advocate for it. Um, we've got a piano black air vent on the left, pair of piano black vents in the center, mirrored on the right-hand side, of course. And in the middle, we've got our big infotainment screen popping up just here, surrounded by a little bit of satin. Now, although there is a lot of information on the screen, Thankfully, the bulk of the things we need to do in the car are on actual buttons and dials, which is so much nicer. Front screen demist, wrist screen heater, that kind of thing. It's all on physical buttons, which is fantastic. And so is the volume. And so is the volume for the radio. Just the basics are just so much better when they put them on real things. Moving in front of the driver, we have a nicely illuminated dashboard. This bright white on the dark black really does stand out nicely. Redlining 6,500 RPM on the left, speedometer up to an optimistic 140 miles an hour, and sub dials for temperature and fuel tucked in there, and a little screen in the middle. And a lot of the controls for the stuff in front of you, the stuff that matters in terms of driving, is back here on the steering wheel. As is the horn, so horn test. Ooh, that was an unexpected pop. Didn't see that one coming at all. Um, the stalks are very solid, very chunky. They've got a real long lasting feel to them. We've got automatic headlights and we've got automatic wipers as well. So, and the steering wheel itself is a lovely flat bottom leather wheel with a bit of perforation down the sides. Some nice satin highlights and our GT line logo in the bottom. So it does look and feel rather nice actually. A little bit of contrast silver stitching making the whole thing feel very sporty indeed. Our information display for the uh, air conditioning, heating, ventilation is all just there. Above a little shelf, USB and regular 12 volt. A big pad here, big enough for your phone. And we've got our drive modes and heated seats and heated steering wheel as well. Wow, extra luxury just there. I like that a lot. For about 25 grand, this car is absolutely loaded. Six speed manual gearbox, love this thing. It's really nice and snappy. Manual handbrake, fantastic. Winning, winning more and more points for being a car you can actually use. I'm really liking this a lot. And finally, a pair of cup holders which are not in the way of anything. This car does everything. We've got a nice little armrest here, sort of semi leather topped, and a bit of a cubby hole inside there as well. Up above, we've got a couple of big interior lamps and a sunglasses holder which comes out very slowly. And that's the front. Let's have a quick look in the back and then get back on the road. Climbing in the back, slightly odd shape because of the intrusion of the wheel arch into the door shape, and a little bit of a step over the door sill into it as well. And it's a bit tight in the back here in terms of space for an adult. Fine for kids though, I would imagine, but a bit tight for someone my size. Hang on, I'll try and hold the camera out to me. This may or may not focus on me, I don't know, but this is how much space I've got in the back. My view out from the back seat is slightly hampered by this very large C post just here. And when I shut the door, that rising shoulder line does cut in as well. So if you're a small child sitting sort of face height down here somewhere, it might feel a bit claustrophobic. Headroom is good though, because the uh, roofline carries on way behind the, uh, the seat. And uh, knee room isn't bad, but it's very, very tight on my feet. In terms of amenities, we've got a single USB socket down there, no ashtray slash litter tray, and we've got a map holder on the back from the back of the passenger seat. Power comes from a one liter, three cylinder, 118 horsepower engine. 0 to 60 times around 10.4 seconds, and the top speed is 115. Under the car, we've got McPherson strut suspension up front and we've got coupled torsion beam in the back, which means we've got a nice low load space floor for the boot, meaning more luggage in the smaller body. Now, out on the open road, we're cruising at a steady 55 on, reasonably okay road. There's a little bit of road noise coming up from the tires, no wind noise from the bodywork and the windows, but overall, it's a very nice place to be actually. The driver's seat raises and lowers, it's got big levers that are easy to find to push the seat back, back and forth. So it's quite easy to find a comfortable driving position. I found myself sitting quite low in the thing, which is actually very comfortable indeed. Combined economy is an impressive 50 mpg, and CO2 emissions are 129 grams per kilometer. And the on the road price for this particular car is 24,770 pounds. Now being more of a crossover shape than anything else, you might wonder how this is going to handle through the corners and we've got a few bends coming up here at a steady 60 miles an hour. It actually takes it with a plum. Sails through with no problem whatsoever. 
Oh, a little bit of oil interference and lane keep assist just here. This is the scourge of modern cars, lane keep assist, unfortunately. Can I turn this off? They're great on the motorway, but really annoying on country lanes. I do quite like the sound of a three cylinder. This is a four valve per cylinder engine and have a lovely little gruff sound, like half a 911 bearing down on you. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this look around the Kia Stonic. If you have, as always, please hit like and subscribe and join us again next time driving something completely different.